All right, so now that we have the rails off the vehicle and we want to get them prepped for painting, one of the things we want to do is get this metal piece, this little this metal insert in here out. You can see how it kind of just rides in there. There's a little bit of movement, but in all of that, there's one nice little plastic like grommet that's been put in there. And so we're gonna get that out and get this metal piece out. We wanna do that so that I, I'm doing it just because I don't wanna mask anything off. I wanna wash this thing down really good. I'm gonna you know, wash all this stuff down and get it ready for painting. I don't have to worry about, I mean, this, this would be a pain to like, to tape off. Is that person I think it would be? And here's, here's a, you see that? that kind of the oxidized plastic some of that's oxidized plastic and some of it is you know i was using uh, like plastic restore stuff on here for a while so i need to get that stuff off make sure there's not any so when i paint the paint's actually got a something to you know grab onto and not any like oil or i don't know stuff that would not cause it to adhere to the plastic very well so i want to get this off and you know get as smooth a service as i can and go from there so let's get this metal bracket off so on the back side of that little plastic rivet that i was showing from the front you see here it's mushroomed out in the back whatever the walls i'm using is a razor just kind of gently press it on they really don't have to do too much in the way of like sawing There we go. And you guys out. There's a little butterfly foot. Hey, paper. Dog breathing in my ear. All right, so let's get this, slide this out. Now, in order to get this out, really all you have to do is, I'm just, you know, has it flipped over, you just slide it out this one way. Then you can kind of lift up on this end and just slide out. how dirty that is some of that's probably the original color like charcoal gray whatever it is and that's that's what i'm going to be painting this so let's get the other one off and then we'll get these rails cleaned up the plastic part of the trim cleaned up i'm going to go on the other side it would be a good idea to kind of catch the it's kind of a, a more angled side it seems to go towards the outside of the vehicle kind of goes with the profile of the trim on the outside there whereas the inside is a much shorter flatter rail so i've got them backwards right now just because i was working on this one this is this one here is the what would be the passenger side that one there is the driver's side yeah, and that's how you get the metal rails out of there. So what I'm going to start out with, I'm going to try just a little bit of seat, simple green in some warm water for the initial clean. See how that does. You don't want to get super aggressive on it because you don't want to, you don't, it, because it is plastic and it is, in my case, it's aged plastic. You don't want that to, you don't want to enhance any kind of brittleness or open up pores more than the necessary in that plastic. You know, don't go getting like acetone or paint remover or stuff like that on there because it will just probably just destroy your trim so go easy you know you could probably use a, a heavy duty dish detergent but i'm just going to use the simple green Right, 
and go rinse this one off. And I'm gonna wash it with the little pad here. And it's a little, a little aggressive, not too much. I mean, it's not like a, a Brillo pad or anything like that. And then uh, I'll wash both of them with that. Then I'm gonna hit them with a uh, glass cleaner and a blue shop towel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test, I'll just run my finger on the plastic to see if any more like gray stuff kind of comes up. If it does, I'll probably like do it one more time with the uh, with the glass cleaner and a shop towel, uh, and then uh, then I'll just let it all dry real good and get ready to paint. All right, so I did, all I did was I took a blue shop towel and just you know dried all up and down just to get the stuff off there. I've actually got an outdoor fan kind of blowing on it to help with little nooks and crannies. But go ahead and, and dry, you know dry the inside as well. And the reason I say that is because depending upon how s soon you're going to be painting, you don't want to run the risk of any any water that's you know inside on the inside, like especially towards the ends, like dripping out and getting in your paint and make, making it run. So just just hit the inside with the blue shot towel as well. So. There's the glass cleaner I'm gonna use. Ammonia free, leaves no film, okay, whatever. Lock store said this is great stuff. But of course they think I bought it for windows. I bought it for this. I'm gonna just try it in a small area just to see, make sure it's not like super aggressive. So I did tell you guys I was gonna run my finger. Just a little bit, almost not detectable. So we'll see what happens with the glass cleaner. I'm gonna shut off my fan and show you what I did down here. So I just sprayed a little bit on, right on the towel and then did <laughs> foam everywhere. And then just, Wipe it all down as best I can. I'm not like putting a lot of pressure on it, but you, it's it's taken off. You know, I imagine there's some coloring that it's taking off as well. You know. and let's just try a little bit, like right directly on. And you know, I'm not trying to get this perfect, but I do want to make sure at least. Not be doing this six months from now again. So preparation goes a long way with these things. Well, with anything really. So maybe maybe what I'm doing is a little bit of overkill. I guess a better safe than sorry. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'll go ahead and finish the rest of this, get the other side done, give it the old finger test, and yeah, we might be ready for the first coat. All right, so this is what I'm using. It's a charcoal gray trim and bumper paint. I've got the black as well, so if the gray doesn't look right, once I get done, then I'll, I'll go with the black, but I'm gonna try this first, because I think this is more towards factory color. You can kind of see it's kind of hard to maybe see it in the light as is but you can see the darker section there in the middle going away from the camera which is more factory that's the, that's the part that was covered up by metal so you can see how much it's faded out so i'm just going to go over with a, a real light coat to begin with here's my wife's old garden box here before we move it that's my staging area Not bad. Let that dry. I'm gonna grab the other one. See if I can get a first coat on that one. If I can at least get a first coat on this and let it 
kind of tack dry, I'll be happy with that. Before I go with another coat, let's see a couple spots there. Just. Probably the other thing I should point out is it's not too windy today, too breezy. But if it was real breezy, you'd want to be you know sensitive of stuff blowing into your paint job. I'm going to call that good for the first coat. And it's about all I have time for right now. So I'll just let that dry as is. And then I'll come back and put a, maybe a second or third coat on. Good idea to let it wait about, what they call it, flashing when you're actually doing painting on like an automobile, like the paint. But you know, just let it dry for five or 10 minutes before you go hit it with the second coat at least. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes and I already kind of tested a couple areas. It's not tacky or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the second coat on. Just a little bit thicker maybe, but not, not a whole lot. We don't want it to run. The other thing I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back and wiping off the nozzle on there so the paint doesn't because these rattle cans, it'll kind of spittle around that nozzle. And then as the other paint's coming out, it'll grab it and, you know, like flick it onto the your paint job. Again, I'm no paint expert. I'm just sharing some observations and some other things I've watched online. All right, so we've given it a good chunk of time here. It's not tacky anymore. I'm going to go ahead and put this as the third coat. And I'm definitely going to do more of a sweep on it putting it on that's all I've got time for tonight I'm gonna let that dry I'm gonna do one more coat so I'll have four coats total on this and then I'm going to call that good. All right so we're slapping back these on the car just a quick little review. Everything's back together just the reverse of the way I took it apart with the metal piece just working it in carefully. Be gentle with the plastic you know the paint probably needs you know I put a coat on this morning and it probably would be ideal for that paint to have you know I don't know at least 48 hours. Basically we're at the point where we're going to just slide this on and I'm using my finger in here to kind of do the guiding so you'll kind of feel it when it catch you'll feel it when it catches in there and it looks like the back was a little high so let's push back there we go there we go okay all snugged in there. I actually washed underneath there with a with a sponge and some just gentle soap. And then the other thing I did is on the T30 screws that were on there before, I took the these little plastic washers that were on there because when what I did is I'm actually replacing with stainless steel some bolts I went and got up at the local hardware store. The thread size is an M6 by one, so the pitch is a one. And I believe these were M6 by one by 16, so 16 millimeters long. They were a little shorter than the T30s, but I wanted to do that because the T30s had a little, looked like a small little taper at, at the tip of the thread that I didn't want to make sure it, happen if I got the exact length in this and then like bottomed out and didn't tighten things down but I'm gonna push that little plastic washer onto each one of those it's an eight millimeter socket head 
put those four in there and just hand tight them down. I'm not putting any thread lock or anything on there. I'll check them in maybe a month and just see if they've loosened up at all. So that's it, right? Everything has been, they've been repainted. I think they look great. But man, I probably spent uh, six bucks in paint. It was more of a pain getting the luggage, the little cross luggage thing off. You'll see that in the other video if you wanna go look at some entertainment. Um, but getting these off was not difficult at all. And I think I price these, if you go get these brand new, like OEM, you're looking at, I think, somewhere between $220 and $250. Could be wrong, but I want to say that's what I saw when I looked it up last. So anyhow, hopefully this helps somebody out, saves you some money, and gets your car back looking nice again. This is Dutch out. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content that you've seen here. Comments and questions down below. I like to get to those if I can. Have a great one.